Welcome back here on Girl Talk. We're at Beaufort Memorial Hospital. Dr. Alejandro Garcia Salas has joined us. Thank you, board certified in internal medicine. Thank I you. cannot tell you how excited I am to have you here to talk to us. To have a physician, an internal medicine physician mm -hmm. captive is wonderful. And the goals of a lot of these interviews are really to provide takeaways for people so that they know um, when to come and see you. Um, what is prevalent these days as far as disease. So talk to us a little bit, if you will, about your background. Well, you know, I'm, um, thank you for having me. Yes, I'm excited. Thank you for having me mm -hmm. here, and I'm, I'm excited to, to be joining uh, Beaufort Memorial. So I, I just, you know, um, switched my career, I guess you can say I'm uh, leaving the military. Okay. Uh, I was a, a Navy physician. Um, I spent four years here in Beaufort at the Naval Hospital, and now I've made the transition to um, a civilian physician. And you're going to be uh, a private practice? Yes, correct. So I will be working at uh, Buford Primary Care. Uh -huh. um, I will be joining uh, Dr. Kessel, Dr. Hux, um, Dr. Webb, as well as two wonderful nurse practitioners. Oh, um, that's exciting. Yes. Um, what I'd like to know a little bit is what is an internal medicine doctor? What specifically do you do? Because I think there's a lot of misinformation. Yes, so we see a lot of chronic disease. Essentially, we are the, the gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. So you come to see us and you may have a problem, whether it's, you know, you feel like you, something going on with your heart. So we'll evaluate you and we'll run some tests. If we feel like there's something a little bit more concerning, then we essentially um, send you to a cardiologist or to a, uh, another subspecialist. So what I hear you say is you are actually my primary care doc. You're someone that I would develop a relationship with over time. You may see me now at 21, and all the way through my lifespan. Absolutely, absolutely. Because we would be the ones that essentially know all your history, know all the um, places that you've been referred to and the different conditions that you know are being managed um, so that only one person you know, gets to manage it all and you don't have um, different physicians trying to give you different medications because sometimes uh, I may treat you differently as opposed to say the cardiologist True. might give you something for blood pressure. As long as we're all in sync with each other, um, then we avoid a lot of the medical errors that sometimes And plus start. I really want someone who knows who I am as well as what my condition is, you know, because everybody's so different, I would think it, it really makes sense. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and that's the type of relationship that you do develop, you know, through the years. Is internal medicine adult medicine? At what age can I come to an internist? So usually we tend to see 18 uh, years and, and above. Okay. okay. So um, usually 17 and below are considered more pediatrics, okay. um, but 18 and above is the population that we see. All right, let's talk a little bit specifically if we can. Sure. Um, I have been here at 63. I've been hearing a lot, I know August is National Immunization Month. And mm -hmm. it's funny, because when I think of that, I think of kids. <laughs> right, right. Right? I do. Absolutely. But absolutely. not so much. As we age, as we are get older, what are some of the immunizations we need to be aware of? Well, one of the ones that you should always uh, be aware of is your yearly flu. I knew you were going to say flu shot. Uh -huh. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's one um, that you always should get. So that's, Why? that's I hear every so many, year. I, yeah, I hear so much pro and con about it. You know, everybody has everybody has their cons, but as we get older, mm -hmm. um, if you do get the flu, uh, then you could be really sick. So maybe during our younger years, right. your body's able to fight it, but as we get older, then it becomes a lot more of a challenge, and then you might end up in the ICU or really sick. And sometimes it can take some time um, to get over that. One of the other immunizations that I'm really curious about is the shingles vaccine. Absolutely. So at the age of 60, that is recommended. Um, Why? So, well, <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, because because you, you could easily develop uh, the shingles, um, which essentially is a very painful rash. Um, it's very painful and it can last anywhere from one week to mm -hmm. four to six weeks and sometimes even longer. So it's one of those uh, viruses that the majority of us have, especially if, if you've ever had chicken pox. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of lives dormant inside you and the vaccine essentially helps to make the symptoms not as severe and the length of time makes uh, it a little bit shorter as well. What about a vaccination for pneumonia? I've always wondered about that as we get older. Absolutely. So really? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So usually that's recommended uh, when you are the age of 65 and above. 
Okay. Okay. So there's there's two. Um, there's the Pneumovax, and then there's Prevnar. Uh, depending on which ones you've had in the past, will depend on how you receive them. Usually, you will receive the Prevnar before you receive the Pneumovax. Um, you know, because we live in the <coughs> South, and you've been here for quite a while, you're a Georgia boy. Yes. Uh, you know, mosquitoes are something. Um, I have a daughter who's getting ready to have a baby, and you know, the Zika virus is. Uh, hey, yes, yes. What kind? <coughs> and now I hear a bit about the West Nile virus. What is your recommendation for people and mosquitoes? Well, well, you know, the the, the West Nile virus has been in the U.S. for quite some time now, mm -hmm. and and uh, as you know, the, the the virus usually infects birds. So. Um, you have to have a mosquito that has been an infected uh, bird and then has to bite the, you know, either a human or an the animal. The perfect storm scenario. Correct. So it's not very, so it's not very common, especially in this area. Um, mm -hmm. Although around this time of year is when you start to see a lot more mosquitoes. Um, one of the things you need to kind of be on the lookout for is, is there standing still water in your, around your house? Okay. So for example, if you have buckets of water, make sure you get rid of those because that's one of the places where mosquitoes tend to uh, lay eggs. Exactly, dog bowls change absolutely, them out. You know, absolutely, absolutely. It's funny, that's something that well. I saw the other day, yes. which is amazing. Well, it's really a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, thank you. I'm um, excited for you in your new uh, yes, adventure. You. You're working with wonderful people. Uh, we'd love to have you back on. There's a lot we can talk about, especially with this demographic. Sure, so we want to thank you. We want to thank all much. of you thank for you. joining us here on, at Beaufort Memorial here on Girl Talk. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>